record tomorrow on evolution. Be watching for the Watchman video broadcast coming out next week. Michelle says, I think Olstein is leading a lot of people on a mission trip to someplace very hot. Very, very hot. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Jude asks the question in Exodus 3311, when Moses spoke face to face with the Lord, uh, was the Lord's face hidden from Moses, or was Moses speaking with pre-Bethlehem Jesus Christ? Um, I would have to say that if he was speaking, and, I, and I'd have to go back and look at this, if he was speaking face to face with the Lord, then he was doing the same thing that Abraham was doing, and that is speaking face to face with the mediator between Father God and men, which has always been the man Jesus Christ. That, that would be what I would say to that. Ray writes in, it's something, that, and this, this kind of caught my attention. It kind of troubles me a little bit. Pastor Mike, a preacher, prayed for me one time and said he was giving me an impartation. I felt something enter my stomach. It felt like a large marble or ball rolling around in a hollow tin barrel. I don't understand what this is all about, but over the years, too many people and ministers have laid hands on me. Ray, I'm going to encourage you, don't ever, don't ever let another minister lay hands on you, okay? Don't ever let that, you know, unless, you know, shaking hands or, you know, whatever, but to, to just give you this impartation, uh, you stay away. If, if you're around a circle of preachers or in a, in a religious setting where that's what they do, get out of that setting. Get, stay away from these people. I had Stan Johnson of the Club O Prophecy want to, after me telling him that God would not give me dreams and visions, he looked at me and said, I can give you that impartation if you want. And I said, no. He wanted to lay hands on me, and I said, no, absolutely not. You're not going to do that. Um, you don't need it. There, I, you just don't need it. You say, well, what about healing, Pastor Mike? Go Again, go back to the book of James. If one of you needs healing, he didn't say go to the pastor for, for, for a hands-on impartation. He said go to the elders, plural, and let them lay hands on you. And there's, I think there's something to that, Okay. So anyway, I would get out of that crowd where everybody's laying hands on you, Ray, and uh, get this thing under the blood, all right? Uh, here is Edwin. So many questions, a little time from Edwin in Jakarta. Welcome, Edwin. Here's my first question. Which scripture reference from KJV would you present to a gay person to effectively lead him to the truth in Christ? Well, let me, let me say this, Edwin, okay? There is no magic formula in the Bible if, if you pick such and such verse, they will get saved. Um, I would, my first inclination would be, I would want to go to Romans chapter one and then go after you're done with Romans chapter one, go to Romans chapter three and then go to Romans chapter six and then Romans chapter eight and Romans chapter 10. I mean, I would just do a Romans road thing starting in Romans chapter one, uh, concerning, uh, those that, um, uh, that God has given over up to uncleanness, okay, in uh, verse 24, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Um, likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one to one another, with men working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. God calls it an error. And what you're doing is you're sowing seed into somebody's life with the word of God. And if they won't listen, if they won't accept that, and, you, and you're doing it in love. I'm not talking about your uh, Westboro Baptist Church out holding up a sign that says, God hates fags. Um, you're sincerely going to this person in love. I s sat next to at the hospital bed of a young man, a uh, homosexual who was dying of AIDS. And uh, I led him, and he, he specifically asked for me to come there. Because he didn't, he knew he was dying. He didn't want to go to hell. And I preached his funeral. I was there with him the night that he died. And I looked at, of course, his two former boyfriends were there too. And they were going, we just think it's so wonderful that you're just so open. You'll come and be with him. And then I said, no, nah, hang on a second here. Let me straighten something out for you guys. He called me. And I told him the story. He called me. He wanted to come out of the lifestyle that you guys have been in. He's not the same. I don't care what you think of him. He's not the same person. But anyway, I believe he got saved. 
And um, I, I believe I'll see him in heaven. He's either lying through his teeth, and, but I believe, that he, I believe that he was saved. So just give him Romans chapter 1 and then uh, give him the rest. Um, Vern in PA says, instead of gold and silver, my wife and I decided to buy food. Can I come over to your house? Uh, if our neighbors and friends end up at our house for food, see, that'll be me. Uh, we'll have to listen to the gospel. Otherwise, I think the money will all burn away. Praise the Lord. Watcher Doyle in Niederland says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. It is the, the, T-H-E, root of all evil, which while some covered it after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Think about what Jesus said concerning the thorns. In Mark chapter 4, he called the thorns to the deceitfulness of riches. Did you know money will lie? It sure does. Langston writes an interesting question. Langston, you, I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the straight up answer. He asked the question in the book of Enoch. He told his kids not to bury their gold, but to share with the poor. Have you read the book of Enoch? Langston, don't read the book of Enoch. Okay, don't read the book of Enoch. Well, why? It's not in here, and it's not in here. Yeah, I and mean, you have to stop and think about it. Why is the book of Enoch not in there? Why did God not put the book of Enoch in the King James Bible? You have to ask yourself that question. Um, it's because it's not right. I, I wouldn't trust it. You say, oh, but it talks about John. How do you know? How do you know that what it's telling you is true? You don't know that. I don't trust the book of Enoch. Okay? And let me, let me address an issue while I'm here uh, concerning what Jude said. Okay, with people, and I used to use this argument in defense of the book of. See, I used to be on the other side of this thing. I have flipped over, people. I'm telling you, man, I have flipped over uh, on a lot of these issues. I used to say, well, Jude quoted from the book of Enoch, so you know it must be some good things in there. That is not. That is not what the Bible says. He says. In Jude verse 14, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. He never says that it was written in a book called Enoch. He said, Enoch said this. Well, then how did Jude get it? Inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Okay? I don't trust the book of Enoch. Um, Holly writes in and says, James Robeson used to be a solid Bible teacher back in the 70s. He used to preach about hell and judgment, but no more. The so-called Christian TV is for the most part trash. Amen. There seem to be less and less solid preaching all the time. People just don't know the word or they wouldn't follow all this feel-good and prosperity trash. Well said, Holly. Um, Vern in PA says, We could ask the question, what's wrong with these false preachers like adultery, greed, fornication, witchcraft, but really, what's wrong with the folks that support them? That's, that's my point exactly on this thing, all right? Uh, Terry writes in, Hello, Pastor Mike. It is called Pimping the Gospel. Their God is mammon. Amen to that. Okay? Their God is mammon. There's at least one in your county and at least one in our county here in Houston, Texas. Okay? Well, uh, thanks a lot for pointing that out. In my county. You make it sound like she's my neighbor and it's like my fault here. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, it reminds me of Jude 4, 1, 1, 4. There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, to, uh, old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men and women, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying only Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. Kenneth Copeland uh, does not care who goes to hell. He does not care who goes to hell. He only cares about you signing the check. Pam writes in, these money evangelists make me sick. I live in a $700 a month, and I'm more than thankful to God for what I have. They can have their money. I have Jesus, and he is my inheritance. Amen to that. You know what? You got that right, Pam. You got that right. I, I've even been told by some people, well, you know, if you don't serve the Lord a certain way, you won't get, you know, the, the rewards that other people get. You know what the reward is for a Christian? The Bible says the Lord is our reward and our inheritance. How much do you want? How much are you going to get of God? He's our reward, people. Edwin says, my second question, I'm using Esau. Man, I need, I need to hurry up here. My, I'm using Esword KJV instead of the book form. What do you think of Esword? I don't particularly have a problem um, with it. Uh, by the way, you once gave me the tip on Bering Seed Publishing for KJV purchases, yet they haven't replied on my question for more than a month. Uh, if they ship to Indonesia, please... 
advise. Gary, if you're listening to that, uh, remind me and I'll get this guy's email address for you. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me let's see what's going on here. Some of these I, I, I don't not really make sense, so I'm just kind of moving on here. Um, oh, Vert, I've used that already. Pastor Mike, I think you should use the Get Smart theme. I have that. I've used it before. Um, I've used that before. John says, sons of God are angels. It's over, clear. Don't believe anything else. Amen to that. Deborah writes in, as we imitate Jesus' example, should we not also follow the Lord's feast? Let me, let me say this, okay? Uh, Jesus observed the feast of dedication in winter and on and on and on, okay? Um, Jesus was a Jew. Now, I will say this. As Gentiles, um, it does not hurt us to follow if we want to, Old Testament feast, it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't make you a better Christian. It doesn't make you more saved than, than the people that don't. Um, we were given four specific commandments in the book of Acts by the apostles. Not to eat things strangled, not to eat things uh, with blood, uh, not to eat food sacrificed to idols, and not uh, to commit fornication. And they were dealing specifically with the question, should the Gentiles, should the Gentile believers follow the law in order to be saved or to stay saved or to prove salvation? And the apostles met together in the book of Acts and they, deci they decided, and these men were being led by the Holy Spirit, if you have evidence to the contrary, I would like to see it, but it doesn't exist in the Bible. The apostles are gathered together by, by leading of the Holy Spirit, and they discerned among themselves. The question was, why should we as Jews make the Gentiles keep the law when we ourselves couldn't keep it? We are, they admitted, Paul admitted, that he was zealous for the law more than anybody in the world, and he couldn't keep the law. And so they said, why should we make the Gentiles do something that we have never been able to do since we received the law. And I think the clear message of the New Testament is that God is wanting to show, God, listen to this now, God is wanting to show Israel, the Jews, the ones with the law, that he is able to save people who don't keep the law. And to make them just, see, because right now the Jews say, we keep the law. Really? No, they don't. They're just lying about it. They've never kept the law. They've never done it. You say, well, they kept most of it. That doesn't count. The book of James says, if a man offends the law at one point, he is guilty of all. And so, and I'm not saying, um, uh, Deborah, I'm not saying that you're like this, okay? Because I don't know you. But I have had one encounter after another with legalistic, quote-unquote, messianic, uh, pretend-to-be-Jew Christians who always say, well, you've got to keep the feast, and you've got to do this, and you don't, you don't follow the Sabbath, and you don't do this, and you don't do that. And they come down in com condemnation upon people who love the Lord. They love the King James Bible. They're repentant of their sins. They come down on them and say, you're not really saved because if you were, you'd be, you'd be having... Uh, uh, Passover with us, or you'd be doing the Feast of Trumpets, or you'd be doing all this stuff. That's how you know you're really saved. And it's almost like an arrogancy of, of people who, and I, again, Deborah, I'm not saying this is you. I hope it's not. I hope you have a humble attitude, a humble spirit about this. And if you want to keep those laws, Romans chapter 14 says clearly, clearly, Romans chapter 14. See, I'm going to open up my can. I'm going to open up my can. Romans chapter 14. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. And I've had people, I had people at a church one time surround me when I got done preaching and teaching, surrounded me and was chewing me out because I had mentioned that I had had a bacon cheeseburger before the meeting. And they were letting me have it over the law. They said, you can't do that. 